Hello there, I'm Adrian Hart. I've been studying or looking at the, uh, the impact of land management on soil health in New South Wales, mainly in the mixed farming belt, our food bowl if you like, for over 30 years. Now we think that everyone should have an interest in the health of their soil. If you're a consumer of food, and we all are, it impacts on how much you pay for the commodity over the counter. If you're a farmer, it certainly impacts on your bottom line, the condition of your soil. We're going to compare sites on the one soil type within metres of each other that have a different uh, history of management where we'll be able to show you how you can make a first base quick appraisal of the condition of your soil. Don't be afraid to get down on, the, on your hands and knees. You'll need a couple of very simple tools and get your hands dirty. And this is how it's done. So where we're positioned just at the moment, um, it, it's, it's a relatively undisturbed site, historically speaking. It's had a limited amount of grazing over the years. In a minute we'll go and look at the site next door, same soil type which has had a considerable history. So let's go back to the undisturbed site just for the moment. The organic matter story is pretty well demonstrated on this site. You can see evidence of um, you know, perennial grass root systems that have senesced from previous growth cycles and you can see the new stuff there. You can see evidence of uh, biotic activity deep into the uh, surface soil and well into the subsoil as well. Imagine how, how this particular soil would behave when it's wet and how it might be able to withstand uh, a little bit better the, the forces that might be applied to it, whether they be just weather, whether they be stock trampling, whether they be tillage practices and machinery and that sort of thing. Well here we are at the second site. This is the disturbed site, the site that's had a fairly consistent uh, tillage history and land management history in terms of crop production and improved pastures. We're only about five or six metres away from the other site, same soil type, same farm, different management histories. And already you can see the difference of what we have here in the, in the, the upper soil profile. It's different. The, the lack of porosity is evident. There's lack of structure, there's lack of fissures, there's lack of root material, there's lack, lack of biotic activity. Now can you imagine what, how this soil would behave when it's rained on? Rain water would be trying to get into the subsoil and grow the crops, grow the profits to feed us all. Instead it tends to run off, potentially creating water quality problems in adjoining water courses, but uh, above all it's affecting the profit uh, from this particular paddock. And now we're going to demonstrate just two simple tests, the first of which is a slaking test. We're just using a couple of white lids inverted here that we're going to put distill water in, you can use tank water, uh, use the bottom, bottom of your pannikin if you don't have little dishes like this, but it just as a demonstration to show how the aggregates from the two different scenarios behave themselves when they're wet rapidly. So I'm just taking three small aggregates, little peds from the two scenarios, that's the undisturbed and disturbed, just placing them in the water, just so they're submerged. Don't drop them in, just place them gently. That's from the undisturbed, from the disturbed, and we'll just see how those soils react to rapid wetting. We'll come back and look at those later. So let's have a look at another paired comparison, this time involving uh, how the water gets into the soil profile as we discussed before. It's a very simple infiltration test. You at home can use a piece of um, large PVC cut down to 15 or 20 centimetres or a large piece of ball casing cut down, lightly hammered into the soil. So let's just see how this particular soil, the undisturbed site, reacts to the addition of a bucket of water. So even after less than a minute of that water being in that constrained area, you can see the, the impact of the water. The water is actually infiltrating very rapidly into this particular soil here. Well here we are back at the disturbed site, so let's just see how this particular soil behaves to an application of the same amount of, of water. Just pour it in gently like that. Fairly dry soil, but it's not moving a lot. Certainly there's a bit of moisture going in, so let's just see how that behaves in about an hour's time. We'll come back and have a look. Now look, here we are back at the undisturbed site. Remember we put the bucket of water in there. It's just 15 minutes ago, 15 minutes later, not a skerrick of water. Moist surface, not a skerrick of water. And this is the reason why. You can see the connectivity in the pore space here. You can see the worm holes. The holes created by little ants and little beetles. The root material. It's a very good scenario for an infiltrating profile of water. So here we are back at the slaking test we set up previously. And in fact, only 20 minutes ago we set it up. You can already see the marked difference in the way that those peds from the different scenarios have behaved. Here in the undisturbed, they're just as we put them in. They've retained their integrity. And over here in the disturbed scenario, they've slaked. They've slaked right down to a little crown, basically. And you can see all those little micro particles. 
And again, that adds to the story about infiltration processes. Now we've come back to the disturbed site, the infiltration ring. You can see it's one hour we put that bucket of water in. It really hasn't gone too many places. We can see a little bit, bit of it's gone in. You can see the ring there from the organic matter on the top. It's dropped as the surface soil wetted up, but when it hit that massive zone of lack of porosity, it really was struggling to get in uh, after one hour compared to the other site. So it's, it's obvious that in the Australian environment, we do need some positive interventions in the way we manage these soils, particularly our Australian soils, which don't cope very well with you know, regular desiccation, demise in organic matter, and from being subjected to regular uh, mechanical pressures, whether they be through tillage machinery, compaction from animals or the like. So what we've shown is with a couple of very, very simple observations you can conduct on your own land, on your own soil, you can get a good idea of how your soil is performing in terms of its overall health. And of course the challenge becomes one of selecting the right balance of land management practices which are good for the soil, good for the environment and good for your bottom line. And many farmers are doing just that. <laughs>